Paul Offit is a, uh, I think a vaccine evangelist is the only term that, you know, he's like a Hotez like character um, where he is such a passionate advocate for this set of technologies that he appears to miss the obvious signs that there are dangers and, um, and that caution needs to be exerted, cost-benefit analysis needs to be done very carefully and by people who don't have a conflict of interest. And recently, Bobby Kennedy Jr. has uh, taken Paul off it to task. Apparently, he had personal interactions with him in which he brought things to Offit's attention that should have raised Offit's eyebrows about uh, vaccine safety and I believe the lack of placebo controls and off it uh, disappeared and wouldn't respond. So anyway, people can look into what Bobby Kennedy has said. But this conversation with Gad Sad and Paul Offit had an interesting uh, exchange, which I will show you. Uh, we have a tweet that contains it. Do you want me to show the video? Yeah. Is there a problematic link between the COVID vaccine and heart inflammation? <clears throat> There certainly is a, a causal link between vaccination and myocarditis and pericarditis. No doubt about it. Uh, the the um, it's, it's unclear why. I mean, it may be, uh, as was actually noticed in 2020, that SARS-CoV-2 virus, the spike protein, mimics um, a one of the proteins on heart muscle cells, specifically the, the heavy chain of of uh, of. Uh, of, of um, actin. So so if that's true, then while you're making an immune response to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, you're also inadvertently making an immune response to your own heart muscle. All right. So uh, the, uh, the attribution was cut off on the screenshot there. That was from a tweet by, I believe, Chief Nerd, which has been an excellent account, uh, basically an aggregator that brings together all kinds of interesting information surrounding COVID policy and treatments. It's Nick Hudson. Uh, uh, he is, I believe he has taken the clip from, um, from Chief Nerd, but anyway, okay. Nick Hudson tweeted okay. it. But in any case, what Offit says here is interesting because Offit, who is a vaccine evangelist, acknowledges, in fact, he says there's no doubt that there uh, is a causal link between myocarditis and pericarditis and the COVID vaccines. But then he goes on to explain what he believes the mechanism is. And he says that it is likely because the spike protein, and mind you, Dark Horse got fact-checked over the claim that the spike protein was cytotoxic, and that was claimed to be misinformation, though it is clearly not misinformation. Offit here blames the spike protein, and what he says is that it is likely that because the spike protein mimics, mimics the heavy chain of the actin protein in the heart cells, when you create an immunity to the spike protein, you are also creating an immunity that will target your own cells. Now, on the one hand, that is a major admission. Yep, right? it sure is. Some of us tried to warn about autoimmunities, about heart damage, about many different components, and we were ridiculed. We were, uh, we had our censored, demonetized, censored, the, whole demonetized thing the whole thing based on uh, true facts. Yes, and notice. Let's say that his story is right. That that's what's going on here. Well, guess what? Those of us who said. You don't know the long-term effects of these shots. They couldn't possibly be safe. We couldn't possibly have been righter, right? What this says is there was no way to shortcut this safety process and get the benefit of it because what you needed to see was what pathologies developed down the road and you haven't had enough time to see those pathologies. So that is a complete vindication of the idea that they had no right to tell us that these things were safe because long-term harms uh, were unknowable at the time to anyone. Okay. But why is a vaccine advocate whose conflicts of interest have been raised by many, why is he making this acknowledgement? All right. It seems like a big acknowledgement, but I would argue that this is actually the medical equivalent of a limited hangout. Mm -hmm. Meaning, define limited hangout. Limited hangout is a term in um, uh, 
security state and espionage circles for a presentation that minimizes a particular set of facts, does report something true, but minimizes the significance of it so that it will sort of satisfy the desire to know that something bad happened. You know, it throws somebody under the bus or some process under the bus while rescuing some core element. Yeah. And it allows uh, those who are who have been suspicious of the clams to say, "See, they acknowledge the thing. They're not. They're not the bad guys." Right. No. Okay. And we're and this is going to be a big uh, theme for today's podcast. But um, the issue here, I believe, why did all of the skullduggery that unfolded around these vaccines happen? Everything from the uh, the false demonization of repurposed drugs uh, to the claim that things were safe and effective that couldn't possibly be to the statistical skullduggery that we will get to soon. Why did all of this happen? Well, this is a hypothesis, and I've said it before, but the hypothesis is that pharma, which is a very difficult business, it is hard to find things that actually improve human health and that actually fight disease, it can take decades to get it done from the point that you have something promising to the point that you have something that has been demonstrated to work and to be worth the harm that it does, and all drugs do some harm. Um, so that can be decades out. So that's a very hard profile, and it cannot work. You can invest hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars in something, and then get nothing back. It's risky. So, okay, that's the situation. Pharma had something that was potentially radically changing of what is medically possible. It had the solution to a problem that was very difficult to solve. And the problem that was very difficult to solve was many places you want a cell to produce something it's capable of producing, but the genome doesn't support it either because there's a broken gene in the genome that isn't producing the right product or because the genome doesn't contain the code at all. And so you want the cells to do something. In principle, you could edit it in, but how the hell do you get enough cells edited to make a difference, right? If you can't produce insulin, how do you get enough cells to take up the gene that would allow them to produce insulin to solve your own problem internally? And the mRNA platform is brilliant, right? It bypasses the nuclear genome and it inserts the mRNA message into the cytoplasm where the cells do what they're told and they transcribe it and they make any protein you want. That is a brilliant mechanism for solving this problem. But it has a giant gaping flaw in it, which is any cell of yours that produces a foreign protein, which is what inherently will happen when an mRNA message is introduced into your cell, will be targeted by your own immune system and destroyed. You will create an autoimmune disorder. That's what it will do when it works. How the hell are you going to bring such a thing to market? Well, you would need a solution to the following problem. How do you get it to only those cells where that's a cost worth paying? How do you keep it out of your heart, for example? Well, you can't do it by coating it in a lipid nanoparticle that's just simply a fat attracted to other fats because all of your cells are covered in fat. It's completely indiscriminate, right? And nobody can afford to have this happen in their heart. And it's not the only tissue where that's true, but it's the most obvious of them. So they had a platform that solved a huge problem, and they had no way to deliver it safely to market because they didn't have a targeting mechanism. What a shame. Well, um, I thought it was Rahm Emanuel who said, uh, don't let any good crisis go to waste. I was recently told that it was Henry Kissinger who first said that. I don't care which one it is. I'd love to know if Kissinger said it first, but nonetheless, it sounds, sounds like something he might have thought. Um, in any case, okay, so they had a pandemic, they had a technology they couldn't bring safely to market, and the emergency allowed them to do it, right? The emergency allowed them to go through emergency use authorization, to get people on board with taking it because people were so scared of COVID. It allowed them to basically push aside all of the safeguards that should have prevented a prototype technology like this from reaching the market without demonstrating safety. So, okay, pharma accomplished the impossible. It took a technology that it owned that was, in my opinion, at least three decades out from being usefully and safely deployable, if at all. There's no telling whether you could have rescued it, but if they had a way to target it, it might have taken three decades for them to figure out what that way was, to figure out how to 
bring it about and then to show that it was safe. And they didn't want to wait. And so this crisis gave them the opportunity not to wait. Now, here's the point. Now, you've got a huge fraction of the globe that has already accepted mRNA vaccine technology. And how? How accepted. are you going to rescue it from a 1 in 35 chance of damaging your heart? Right? How are you going to overcome the dawning awareness that this stuff is lethally dangerous and to tissues you cannot afford to have damaged? Blame well, the spike protein. Right. If the problem is inherent to the spike protein, then okay, we admit it, we picked the wrong protein, but all you got to do is swap in a protein that doesn't have some flaw like this and the mRNA platform is right back on track. On the other hand, if we are right in what we have been saying for, If it's both things. If it's, if it's both things. Which spike it is. protein is a bad choice, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what protein. Any foreign protein transcribed by your cells is going to cause your own immune system to go after your own heart cells if that's where this thing ends up transfecting. Yes. So then- and It is both. It 100% is both. Well, let's just say- I'm, well, Okay, you know- Logically speaking, I, that, that was a figure of speech. I yeah. should not say 100% in a scientific context, but uh, is the spike protein cytotoxic? Yes. Now we even have Paul uh, Offit, what did you call him? A, a vaccine a, evangelist? evangelist, yeah. Uh, acknowledging that. And is the mRNA platform itself going to indiscriminately, because it has shaved away all of the evolutionary um, context of the organism that it is supposedly vaccinating you against, indiscriminately attack things like your heart cells? Yes. Do I know that 100%? No. But uh, it seems extraordinarily likely that both things are true, and we have evidence in both cases. And the yes, m much evidence of many kinds has emerged since we first deployed that hypothesis. Right, that there is evidence of immune cells attacking the heart where we have these cases of myocarditis. It's not mm -hmm. simple inf inflammation; it is tissue destruction that is downstream of transfection of these cells, and even worse. This platform involves hyper-stabilized mRNAs that when the cells that contain these transfection elements are destroyed, spill out and are liable to transfect new cells. They may transfect immune cells, in fact, cells that are dedicated to cleaning up the, uh, the destruction of cells that the body assumed were virally infected. So either we have a, well, that was an unfortunate protein to have chosen. We should have picked something else you know, but mistakes happen, which is what Paul Offit's claim is. Mm -hmm. yep. Or this platform is still fatally flawed, and that's why it never should have been sped through all of the processes that would have been necessary to demonstrate you had a vaccine that was worth the cost of injecting it in people. So that's where we are. And I believe what Paul Offit is doing is a limited hangout designed to rescue the mRNA platform from the uh, natural... Um, consequences of what we have now discovered at the cost of who knows how many lives globally, who knows how many years people lost, who, who knows how much the cost of this destruction has been. And yes, the spike protein was not a good choice, as we have said many times, but it is far from the worst problem here. And the worst problems do indict this platform until proven otherwise. Awesome. I mean, completely diabolically terrible. Yes. Awesome.